Hi everyone, this video is part 2 of 4 of a series of tips and tricks to get quickly started with Lumerical Scripting and Python API. In this video, I will go through a quick start Python script for running Lumerical simulations without the graphic user interface, also known as the GUI or GUI. I will be using Visual Studio Code for my interpreter and using the newest Python version 3.10. For an easier out-of-the-box scripting setup, I recommend instead using Anaconda. Anaconda is a distribution of Python with many other useful tools for data science. Specifically, Anaconda comes packaged with an interpreter called Spider, with a friendly user interface and an integrated terminal. To start off, we will first import the Lumerical Python API by locating the API file and adding it to the system path. To do this, we import sys and os for the necessary pathing functions. Next, we will append the absolute path of the API file to our system path. For Windows, the default path is C drive and program files in the Lumerical folder. For Linux machines, this would be under the slash opt slash Lumerical folder. Please note that when Lumerical versions are updated, the folder path will also need to be updated. At the time of this video, Lumerical is on version 2022 R2 which corresponds to the folder being named v222. Next, we will import the Lumerical API, also known as LUM API. We can then make a call to launch Lumerical mode to confirm that the library is properly imported and working. This can be done through the call lumapi.mode. As expected, when ran, Lumerical mode launches successfully. Next are examples on how to launch each of the tools in Lumerical. There are four softwares to launch from the API. There is Mode, which also includes FDE, EME, and VAR FTDD tools. There's FTTD, which includes FTDD, Stack, and RCWA tools. Device, which includes the Charge, Heat, DGTD, FEEM, and NQW tools. And finally, Interconnect, which includes the Interconnect, Q Interconnect, and CML compiler. Using Python, you can also launch multiple instances of the same tool or multiple tools. To do this, you can assign the Loom API call to an object. You can then call the object to perform different actions, such as these eval and pause lines I have here in the example script. These two lines will output a string to the Lumerical prompt and keep the tool open for 10,000 seconds. The pause can be escaped by pressing spacebar. This is especially useful for debugging simulation files called from Python, as it prevents the instant closure of the program upon completion of the script. You can also make a close call to the tools. This is useful if a forced close is necessary when scripting. Next, I will show how commands to Lumerical can be done through the Python API. We will create a simple simulation of a waveguide as a demo. The transition from Lumerical script to Python API is very straightforward, as all the commands and formats remain the same. All you have to do is call the tool object first prior to the function, such as here in line 44, where we declare a mode object, mode 3. We can then create a rectangle in this instance of mode by calling mode3.addRect. In the same way, we can then proceed to set the parameters of this rectangle via mode3.set, as shown in lines 46 to 50. If we execute our script, we can see that the rectangle is generated as expected. We then proceed to set up a simulation region using the same method. We then call the eval and pause protocols to confirm that the simulation is set up correctly. As you can see on screen, the script was able to create a rectangle for a waveguide and a region that encloses the area of interest. Finally, we can also run the simulation file from Python using the function findModes. 
Find modes is equivalent to the generate button under the icon mode analysis window in the GUI. Find modes will return the number of modes found, which you can write to an object named data here. This is a rudimentary example of how data from the tool can be extracted to Python for post-processing. This brings us to the end of this tips and tricks video. In the next video, I will mention how to access other simulation data and some useful best practices for scripted simulations. Thanks for watching.